Well, I thought, uh, you know, today was, uh, I like how our guys responded. Uh, Quad A had missed a couple of days of practice, was feeling under the weather. Um, and uh, we started an A prior tonight. I thought the guys came out and really defended. You know, that was our big focus. And, um, and uh, you know, we've been working on a little bit better flow offensively. Uh, I felt in both areas, uh, you know, we were we were pretty effective. You see how to use a, a really good three-point shooting team. And, uh, I thought our guys did a really good job with the scouting report, um, really uh, in detail, making sure that they were doing their assignments. So um, great bounce back. Great to be home. Great win for us. All right. We'll go ahead and open it up to the media. Chris Fetters followed by Lauren Kirschman first. Yeah, Hop, after yesterday talking about how excited you were about the offense and everything else going on um, and Quade being down a little bit, can you talk a little bit about what went into picking Nate maybe over Marcus, for instance, in terms of the start? Yeah, Nate Pryor has been, uh, you know, he's he hasn't had the experience, but in practice he's just been really, really good. Um, he's, a, he's an old school soul point guard, and I think he just, you know, the difference with him and everybody is he plays like it's his last game plays with a lot of energy. He plays team basketball. Um, he shares it. He runs a team. And, uh, you know, we needed that type of energy. I think he's a very good defensive player. And, uh, you know, when he has the ball, everything is calmed down. So very happy about his performance, how he responded tonight. And, uh, you know, it'd be a great player for us as we move forward. All right, Lauren, you're up, followed by Percy. Yeah, Hop, it seemed like Nate Pryor and Quade Green had a really good chemistry together. What do you see with them on the on the court together? Uh, two two guards, uh, point guards that play the position that have uh, played in a lot of high-level games that um, have high IQs and uh, have great instincts. And uh, it's a heck of a combination. And... Uh, Tonight, I thought they shared the ball. Um, they get the ball moving. Um, and, uh, you know, you can see chemistry. Sometimes you can't explain how it happens, but it happens, and uh, they've got it. All right, Percy, you're up, followed by Lars Hansen. Coach, I'm not sure I've seen your defense play better. Uh, you guys held them to four of 23 on three-pointers and 28.8% from the field. Just – just can you talk about the improvements that you made from game three to game four? Newer guys are getting better at it. The veteran guys are getting better at it. And I thought today not only was a great activity, but, um, uh, you know, the coaching staff really did a good job preparing these guys uh, for what was going to happen. And it's all about doing your job and understanding that. And I think everybody played a part in that tonight. Everybody played a part in that defense when they got in the game. It wasn't like there was a letdown. It seemed like when new guys came in, there was actually got jacked up. And that's what we tried to do is keep energy on the floor and, uh, and that defensive focus. And that, when your defense is like that, and you're rebounding the ball, you're in transition a lot. And uh, that's when it's fun to play. All right, Lars, you're up, followed by James Price. Yeah, Coach, do you feel that Quade maybe saw the, the court better coming off the bench tonight in the first half because it seemed like you guys started a little slow and then towards the end of the first half, you really started to pick it up when Quade and Nate got in together? Yeah, that, you know, it's 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 combinations. Uh, we, we looked a little slow at the beginning. Quade came in and gave us a little bit of rhythm and he's such a good player and he's, you know, you got to guard him. Um, and, uh, you know, you could see uh, he had, you know, he hadn't been feeling well. He hadn't been able to keep anything down. And to see him, you know, he's usually the energizer bunny the whole game. And, you know, the minutes that he was playing, you could see him with that little sweat going. But he, he was really calm. He was poised. He picked his spots. I think when he was on the bench, the coaching staff was telling him to keep watching how the game is being played. They went under. He hit it. And uh, it just looked easy for him. And it, it seems like when Nate Pryor's in the game for him, it allows it to be easy for him, too, because he doesn't have to handle all the, hand, the ball handling responsibilities the whole time as well. All right, James, you're up, followed by Andy. Hey, how's it going, Coach? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, it looked like you guys were really forcing the issue on defense tonight and get your hands in passing lanes, which kind of seemed to help you out in transition. What did you think of the performance on D and the pace of play tonight? 
I thought our defense was really good. I mean, it obviously can get better, but we we did a good job of of, uh, of their, their two main scores and what we were trying to execute as a game plan. Uh, we were active, uh, and like I said before, it wasn't just the guys who started. When the bench came in, they were making difference in the game as well, and and that's really really important uh, that there's no letdown. You actually get more energized, and you can keep your defense really fresh. And a lot of times, so you know your defense can be your best offense. Um, but that's what our best teams have been so far. Uh, and, it, you know, we've, we worked on some flow stuff. So I thought our pace of play was, was better, um, but uh, still a long way to go, but a good first step. All right, Andy, you're up followed by Dan Raley. Hey coach, it's been a while since we've seen you guys dominate a team on the boards like this, out rebounded them 42 to 29. What did you see from your players in that phase of the game that you were happy with? Well, we were a bigger team, and uh, we had to we had to utilize that as an advantage. That's we 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 did learn that when we were playing Utah uh, that we were pretty big. We, uh, you know, Riley Sorn, uh, Nate Nate Roberts, Samir Wright, uh, Jamal Bay's big for his position. You know, it was so highlighted in our our, our couple of our first two losses uh, that uh, you know it had to be addressed and and a focus and these guys have really responded with it. We had a lot of guys with, uh, you know, four rebounds, five rebounds, you know, four rebounds, 25 minutes, five rebounds, 31 minutes, five rebounds, 25 minutes. Um, Riley Zorn, five rebounds in 10 minutes. I mean, those are big numbers and it's just, it, you know, where focus goes, energy grows. And uh, we've been focusing on it for sure. All right, uh, just four more questions. Uh, Dan followed by Chris. Mike, the thing that impressed me tonight the most was I saw Nate Pryor shift into a gear going from one end of the court to the other that I hadn't seen at uh, Alaska Airlines Arena in a long time. Might you guys be go a little more up-tempo with uh, his ability to run the floor? There's no question about it. You know, we have to be opportunistic in terms of getting the ball up and down the court. Um, you know, the first half sale, you did a really good job of getting, you know, three and four guys back. Um, but, you know, a couple of the hustle plays, a couple of the long rebounds that Quad A and Nate Pryor, you know, fought for. Uh, he was able to bust out and, and beat the team down the court. And I, you know, you know, I think you'll see a steady diet of that if we can still rebound and, and play great defense. All right. Uh, Chris Fetters followed by Percy. Hey, Hop, as good as, as the game went, uh, six minutes in, you guys are down by five. What was it that, that helped kind of create the turnaround to the point where you guys were able to to really run on them and uh, finish the half 12-1? I think it all goes down to defense. You know, we, we know it's – if you watch you watch games in college basketball, it starts a game. So I was watching, uh, you know, UCLA tonight. And, you know, some teams, you know, other teams, you just – you know, you, you, there's a rhythm, but that's why they play 40 minutes. you got to just keep, you know, keep chopping wood and keep moving forward and, and keep staying confident. I think, you know, any time that you've – uh, you know, some teams you can you can kind of lose your poise a little bit. I thought our guys stayed poised. We stayed confident, and we just kept doing you know what we're supposed to do. It's was getting in flow. We were getting into some weave action. We were getting the ball from side to side. There was a couple of possessions where you know you talk about possessions where every player touches it once. Maybe there was a couple of possessions that seemed like everybody was touching it twice and, and had great space and ended up with a couple of made shots. So. You know, that's how we have to win moving forward. We'll have better rhythm, um, which if you look at our three-point shots, I thought there was less bad shots taken. We made 8 for 15, uh, which I think is, is the, the, the result of our flow and um, our pass-first mentality. All right, uh, Percy Allen and then Tim Booth, you'll have the final question of the night. Hey, Coach, I was just about to ask uh, about your, uh, that same thing about your three-point shooting there. Is it a factor of Less is more. I think it, you know what it is, Percy. On balance and rhythm, knock that baby down. And sometimes when your offense is stagnant, it seems like there's no flow. I thought we had better flow tonight. Still wasn't perfect. Still new, but still there was more flow. There was more uh, dribble penetration. There was more of the ball touching the paint. Um, and uh, you know, when you get good shots, you're going to shoot high percentages. You take bad shots, you're not. And that was another thing that we had to fix was our poor shot selection. So really proud of the guys tonight. Um, yeah, really proud. Good. All right. Uh, Tim Booth, take us home. Hey, Mike. Um, 
from a confidence standpoint, when you have three games that go the way the, those first three went, how much can tonight be a, a boost? Just if nothing else, seeing the ball go in easily at the offensive end. And like you said, good, sh good shot selection, good movement. Well, I think, you know, all those things, you know, it's all about getting better. You know, it's, it's DMGB. doesn't matter. Get better. I mean, the last three years we played Seattle U. I mean, we beat them at single digit, single digit, and they had a, a one point lead at halftime last year. And then, uh, you know, we ended up pulling away with five minutes to go in the game uh, where it was tied. And uh, they're, he's, a, he's a really good coach, and they're really good offensively. And I thought our defense tonight was the, the brightest spot. You know, that's that you know that's going to travel. That you know that that you can trust that. And I thought the intensity, the focus was was there tonight. And, you know, that's that's those are the positives moving forward. And, you know, usually, you know, um, you know, we had some incredible lessons, even though we lost the three games. Um, They're against really good teams. Uh, and, and, and you just you learn and you grow. And that's where I was, you know, these four practices before this game. I thought our guys were really committed to each other and committed to getting better. And, you know, no, no one knows what this team can do but them. And, and they've committed and excited for the next game, next challenge. And, you know, we'll keep getting better from there.